One, two, thank you, thank you. We have a lot to be grateful for. Thank you, technology. Thank you, technology. You're everywhere for us to see. Thank you, technology. From solar powered socks to self picking banana trees, where would we be without you? Technology. Thank you, technology. From the bottom of our laser pants. Technology. Thank you, technology. Technology. Thank you, technology. Technology. Thank you, technology. Technology. Thank you, technology. I'm on a first name basis with my microwave. Isn't that right, Dave? Friendly technology. And a robot cat will never bite. Just feed it a calculator. It'll be your friend for life. And oh, look who's here. It's our friend with a brand new digital beard. Handsome technology. Technology. Some of my best friends take batteries. Technology. I don't hold it against them though. Technology. I'm still impressed by Velcro. Technology. Thank you, technology. I see remote control bees and think, look what we've created. Wonderful technology, this planet is upgraded. We've got satellite hats with lots of buttons, knobs, and switches. Can you imagine midnight snacks without glow-in-the-dark dishes? We've got toasters, so powerful launching toast into space. To be honest, it leaves it with a slightly odd taste. Oh, technology, you're my kind of lology. Technology. Is this hovercraft fresh? Technology. Where do I plug in these flowers? Technology. These slippers are recharged. Thank you, technology, from the bottom of our laser pants. I hope you enjoyed the song. I thought it would start this presentation on a bit of a laugh, even though it's a little bit of a boring subject when it comes to technology. Um, me being the nerd I am in the office, thought that this would be the best uh, subject for me to go through. So let's get started. I'll try and be nice and quick and not bore you all to death. It's going to be a short presentation. Then there was motion. It's going to be a short history of cinema technology. Did you see that? What the visual formats that we use in cinema are. What's that sound? The different types of sound that we use. I feel seasick is the additional formats that we use. Think 40x. And then bite me is how we deliver content to cinemas. Then there was motion. The very first motion picture, if you can call it, was just a basically... A selection of photographs of a horse running put inside a big drum and you look through a slit and you got this image which was the horse running through that was done in 1872 impressive for the day and that's what started everything that we do now from there we got a little more technical we added celluloid in the 1890s adding color in the 1900s then the rise of the film industry happened in around 1910 in the 1920s we added sound in the 1930s, according to most people, is the cinema's golden age. In the 1950s, we had to compete with television, so technology had to keep up there. Into the 2000s, we started the digital transformation and went to DCP, what we deliver now. From 2010 onwards is where you start to see the rise of additional formats in digital cinema. We're going to quickly go through what visual formats we use in digital cinema. The first is resolution, aspect, compression, and projection formats. What is resolution? Resolution in a digital sense is the number of pixels in the width and the height of an image. Now, in a film image, so 35mm stock image, the resolution was equivalent to a 4K digital image. A 70mm film is equivalent to a 6K digital image. So film is a very high resolution medium, but it is also very dirty. It's very grainy. It's not a crisp and clear image like you would get with digital. Now, starting at the bottom, we have NTSC PAL, which is what old television, so your old, uh, for lack of a better word, the boob tube TVs, CRT TVs, ran NTSC in the US and PAL everywhere else in the world which is a very low resolution of 640 by 480 for NTCS and 768 by 576 for PAL. Then digital television came in and at this time we're still using film. We're at 720p, so the image is 1280 by 720. We went up to 1080 TV, which is what 90% of television at the moment is. 
which is 1920 by 1080. Your default setting for YouTube is 1080p and, we, and it keeps going up from there. At the beginning of digital cinema, we come in at 2K DCI, which is a little bit wider than 1080p that you get on your television. Um, roughly the same amount of pixels, but it's a little bit different in the image. Going up to the proper replacement for 35mm film, which is 4K digital, um, is 3,996 by 2160 pixels. 6K is one I'm going to point out there because the Top Gun, all of Top Gun was filmed in 6K in digital and then is downscaled to 4K, 2K for all of the um, media that's sent out. We'll, we won't receive a 6K print of Top Gun because there's nobody who can actually project 6K at this point in time. And 8K is coming up next and 12K. I put 12K in there because a camera manufacturer, Black Magic, has just developed and are selling 12K cinema cameras. They're quite cheap in terms of cinema cameras. You're looking at around about $35,000 for a camera. Put that in context a 4k cinema camera from sony cost you about hundred and fifty thousand dollars so aspect ratios there's been lots of different aspect ratios throughout the history of cinema there's a few that are a lot more popular than the others the most popular would be flat which is 185 to 1 so as an aspect ratio it's for every one say centimeter so for every one centimeter high you do 1.85 centimeters wide same with and the next most popular one would be cinemascope which is 2 to uh, 2.39 to 1 so for every one centimeter we go up we go across 2.39 centimeters as you can see the two main ones are the ones in the center 185 to 1 and 239 to 1 very few films have gone much larger than the Cinemascope. Some of the other aspect ratios that you can see there were one-off aspect ratios. Weren't used very much. Cinemira, Ultra Panavision were used a little bit, but Cinemascope, because they had the camera technology, won out. Now, over to colour. Now, well, the human eye can see a lot of colour. On to colour. Colour space is an important aspect of any image be it a still image or a moving image the color space is what we see as an image now this funny looking diagram that's on the screen at the moment the colorful blob is what colors the human eye can see rec 709 which is our current standard for color grading is that small triangle in the middle of the image the rec 709 standard was designed to replicate what film could do moving on from that you've got srgb which is what photoshop uses is srgb so it's a little bit higher color gamut than the rec 709 format dcip3 is the m newer version of rec 709 so it's a slightly larger color gamut giving a little bit better color and a little bit more vibrancy in the images the one that i'd like to point out most is rec 2020 now, if anybody has a HDR TV or an OLED TV, at the moment, you're getting the best replication of Rec 2020 images. So Dolby Vision and HDR Plus. The Rec 2020 shows you a huge 75% of all available colors in an image, giving you much darker blacks, much brighter colors, and much more vivid and lifelike image. Moving on to compression, now, compression is a rather complicated subject, so I'm going to glaze over it quite fast. In cinema, there's one main method of compression for a DCP, which is JPEG 2000. Now, the best way to explain what JPEG 2000 is, is for every frame of film that you have, you have a high-resolution JPEG image, and then it's all stitched together inside the projector basically you're getting each and every frame that you would get from a film projector as a digital medium h.264 is your standard compression method for almost 
everything in terms of online media. H.264 is a very, very highly compressed image, which allows you to get full 4K images over the internet on Netflix, for example, uses H.264. I'm gonna leave compression there. There's some more details here. If you have any questions about compression, ask me and we can go into a little bit more detail. This is where it gets really, really nerdy. Talking about nerdy, here goes into the projection formats. First off is the most common form of digital projection, which is a lamp-based DLP projection. Now, the best way to explain what DLP is, is it's a processing chip, a microchip, with millions of little mirrors on it. Now, when you project a, a light source at that mirror, each of those little mirrors can reflect back whether the mirror is on or off, giving you each individual pixel. The faster that you rotate that little mirror on the DLP chip, the brighter the reflection of that particular pixel is going to be. So to have a black pixel, the mirror is faced away from the lens. To get a white pixel, the mirror is facing towards the lens. To get a gray pixel, or somewhere in between, it's flickering on and off at a particular frequency to give you that shade of gray. Now, all projection chips don't generate color. They're black and white only. So to generate color in a digital projector, you generally need three of these DLP chips. You get red, green, and blue light by putting your main light source, be it a lamp or uh, in some laser projectors, a laser, and putting it through a prism like you did in primary school, splitting it into red, green, and blue light waves. Once you have split your red, green, and blue light, you then project it onto your DLP chip. Once it comes back from the DLP chip, it goes back into a prism, combines, and that's how you get a full color image. The difference between lamp-based and laser is very little. They still both use a DLP chip to create the image itself. Now the laser projector just uses, instead of one light source, that's white and has been split apart, it uses three light sources, a red, a green, and a blue laser, giving you a much more vibrant, vivid image, but it also allows the image to be turned off quite well. So you get much darker blacks. A laser projector has a much greater range of contrast. Now contrast is the difference between light and dark in an image. The higher your contrast ratio, the more black your projector can make. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but you want a projector that can project very good black or stop projecting light. Lamp-based projection can do it, but not to the extent as a laser projection. A laser projection system allows you to create a very good black image on your screen, giving you a very high contrast ratio. So the combination of a very high contrast ratio and the Rec 2020 color space is what gives you a super clear, high dynamic range image. The newest form of projection, even though it's not projection in, in a realistic terms, is an LED screen. Very similar to what you see on the side of the highway, those really big billboards, but just much, much, much higher resolution and higher quality. There's three of these screens in Australia at the moment. Now, they are the only screens that are capable of doing a full dynamic range image. That means when the image is showing a black image, it is black, it's off. There's no light being generated, so therefore the dynamic range on an LED screen is infinite. So the contrast ratio is infinity to one. What's that sound? Now, there's lots of different types of sound. I'm gonna quickly go through what the sound formats are that are used in the cinemas. It all started with just the one speaker. It was a single speaker generally placed behind the screen. And this is what we refer to as a mono soundtrack. So a single audio track. And it just gave the picture some sound. Then somebody thought, hey, what if we put two of those together? Two monos, we get stereo. Generally stereo sound is set to left and right. Or, in some rare cases, they did front and back for stereo sound. We moved on, and the first company to develop surround sound was Dolby, with 5.1 surround sound. 5.1 surround sound gives you 
front left, front right, center. So it's a mix of the mono and the left and right, plus a surround, which are generally placed to the side of you, left and right sound field. The point one in that is your LFE or subwoofer channel. 7.1 is an extension on the 5.1 platform. All it did was add extra speakers behind the audience, giving them a little bit more depth of the sound field. And this is where we're up to at the moment with Dolby Atmos. Atmos extends again on top of 7.1 by adding an overhead channel. Now what this allows is when they're processing the sound, they can actually pinpoint the sound within a 3D space. I feel seasick. And I do when I sit in 40X. Now there's different types of screen alternative formats. The most popular I'll talk about in a sec, but these three are probably the next three in line. Screen X is an extension of the visual image. So instead of having your standard scope screen at a cinema, you have three wrapping around the audience, giving them a 270 degree image. 90% of the film is on the center screen with just peripheral image on the external screens. D-Box and 40X, you've probably all experienced by now. D-Box is a vibrating chair and 40X is a chair that wants to throw you out. 40X is a little bit more involved where the whole seat moves, sprays water in your face, vibrates, does fog, the cinema has uh, flashing lights in it and all that sort of stuff. They even do smells in 40X. D-Box D is a little more simple. The seat just wiggles around and vibrates. IMAX is the most popular alternate format film that's available at the moment. Not so much here in Australia, but in the rest of the world, they're sort of all over the place. IMAX has their own specific resolution that they screen at and their own format of sound. It's a derivative of 7.1 audio. It's just a little bit tweaked to work better in their larger spaces. An IMAX screen is generally very, very large, with the two screens that are in Australia, the Sydney IMAX and the Melbourne IMAX, being the two largest screens in the world. Now, digital delivery. This is the bit where it can get a little bit nerdy and boring, so I apologise in advance. How do we deliver titles to cinema? We deliver it in a DCP package. The DCP package is a secure virtual container in which the film is put. Now that package can be delivered on a hard drive as you can see on screen or we can do deliver that package over the internet or via satellite. DCP is a specification that everybody's agreed to to keep everything secure. DCP is only one part of the package that we send. Their DCP is the file but that file generally excluding trailers and the small pieces of content that we don't require security on is a locked package, a very well encrypted package that cannot be opened without a KDM. DCP delivery, as I said, is generally delivered in one of three ways, satellite, over the air, which is over the internet, or sneakernet, the post. A KDM is a digital key, so it's a text document that allows the server that the DCP file is on to unencrypt that file for a specific period of time. KDMs are very complicated and are very, very secure. Now the way a KDM checks whether we're the correct person is screening that product is whether the server is the correct server. So the serial number on the server needs to be right. The serial number on the projector needs to be correct. The serial number on the audio processor needs to be correct. If any one of those items has been changed, the KDM will not open. It's all designed so that nobody can unencrypt a product that we don't want them to unencrypt. Content playback. To play back a DCP, first we need to ingest the content into the server. So that's what you see me do when I go downstairs and put that DCP into our server. I'm basically copying the files off that external hard drive onto our server. The KDM then must be ingested, same thing, you copy it from a USB or digitally via a network. Once you've done that, you create a playlist on the playback server and put your feature, trailer and any other things that you would like the playback server to play. The playback servers also control in a theatre all of the lighting, 
the automatic doors, the air conditioning, the audio volume, everything is controlled by the playback system. Simple as making a playlist, putting it into your schedule and pressing play. That's really it. If you have any questions, let me know. And I'm sorry that I bored you. I'll send this presentation around. There's a few little cool facts at the end on the end page for you. Thank you very much. One, two, thank you, thank you. We have a lot to be grateful for. Thank you, technology. Thank you, technology. You're everywhere for us to see. Thank you, technology. From solar powered socks to self picking banana trees, where would we be without you? Technology. Thank you, technology. From the bottom of our laser pants. Technology. Thank you, technology. Technology. Thank you, technology. Technology. Thank you, technology. Thank you, technology. I'm on a first name basis with my microwave. Isn't that right, Dave? Friendly technology. And a robot cat will never bite. Just feed it a calculator. It'll be your friend for life. And oh, look who's here. It's our friend with a brand new digital beard. Handsome technology. technology. Some of my best friends take batteries. I don't hold it against them though. Technology. I'm still impressed by Velcro. Technology. Thank you, technology. I see remote control bees and think, look what we've created. Wonderful technology, this planet is upgraded. We've got satellite hats with lots of buttons, knobs, and switches. Can you imagine midnight snacks without glow-in-the-dark dishes? We've got toasters, so powerful launching toast into space. To be honest, it leaves it with a slightly odd taste. Oh, technology, you're my kind of lology. Technology. Is this hovercraft fresh? Technology. Where do I plug in these flowers? Technology. These slippers are recharged. Thank you, technology, from the bottom of our laser pants.